Today we're going to be tying the woolly bugger. The woolly bugger can be tied in many different colors, different size hooks. Uh, today we're going to be using a size 10. Um, the woolly bugger should be in everybody's fly box again. Um, depending upon the specifics and the materials you use, it can be fished um, to look to imitate a large nymph, bait fish, leech, drowning terrestrial insects in some parts of the country. It can be crayfish or crabs or shrimp today. Uh, the, what we'll be using, I'll have a link to that in um, down below so you can go to our website and you can see exactly uh, what we're using. So let's get started. Um, we're going to put the bead on the end of the hook. I'm going to show you an easy way to do that. You attach the hook to the clamp. We're going to be using today a 3.2 millimeter um, gold bead, 1 8th ounce. Uh, 1 8th ounce. I can be using size 10 or 12 hook. So try to uh, get that bead onto your hackle pliers. you got to sneak up on it sometimes because um, they will go flying off into the Netherlands if you're not careful. So once you get it onto your um, hackle pliers, make sure you put the small end onto the hook. Take it off and then adjust it with your fingers and put it back into the clamp, into the vise. Make sure you get it like you want. There we go. And it's nice and tight in there. And right, then we're going to add some lead wire. Now you can use non-lead if you want, but uh, lead is easier to work with. Even though I've heard if you use it too much, it makes you go crazy. Uh, could be the reason why some tires are like they are. Um, so helicopter that lead off both ends. Uh, you could wrap that lead all the way down the, the whole shank if you wanted it to, to kind of fall evenly in the water. But if you put it towards the front like we're going to do today, and depending on how you fish it, uh, it'll make the fly actually undulate in the water. So tie in your string. We're going to then wrap it around the lead to tie that in to make sure it doesn't move around. Once you get it where you want, I'm going to use the string to hold it up and it'll make that, should make your wrap more even down the shank. Once we get to the end, we're going to hang it down. We're going to get it reach in here. We're going to clip it off. And then we're going to add our Malibu, our Malibu. <laughs> we're going to add our Marabou, our Chevy Marabou. Uh, you can see the end of the marabou has like some wispy ends, so we're going to clip those off. Uh, the marabou is not made from actual marabou. It's actually a turkey feather that you dye, that they dye different colors, and you can see that my fingers are turning black. Some people actually will lick it to kind of make it easier to control, but there is no way I'm putting that in my mouth. So you put the edge of your, edge of your scissors and kind of get that off. You could trim it off just straight, but it doesn't give it quite as natural a look as if you kind of pinch it off like that and kind of rip it out. So there we have our uh, tail feather for our woolly bugger. There it's going to be, I'm going to add it in, add about a hook shank. Uh, I'm going to readjust a little bit. This might be a little short, but that's okay. Now you're going to move that measurement to the end, transfer it to your left hand, and pinch it tight. Now you're going to do two or three collecting wraps. Those are loose wraps. And then pull straight up. And what that does, it makes sure that your marabou does not wrap around the shank. You kind of want it to make sure it's right at the end. At this point, it looks like a lead singer from an 80s rock band. Until they get it cut, because they're going into the military. And, and now they get a crew cut. So we're going to wrap that down. Now with the lead the way it is, and with this right to there, it's going to make that whole body a little more uniform. It's probably a little big at the end, and once we tile our stuff in, it's going to be even bigger. But I think it'll be okay at the end. Now I'm going to tie three things in. We're going to do the uh, chenille, which is a really fun word to say. Um, but first, sorry, we're going to add in our little flashing here. Um, you don't need to do this, but it adds a little bit of shimmer to your bug. And just tie it in. You want to try to get that right on the side of the shank if you can pull it down if you tie it in a little odd um, do the other side try to do the same thing and once you get it tied in I'm gonna take my scissors and reach in I'm gonna cut it off about the same same length as the uh, tail is <laughs> all right I'm gonna bring it up a little bit to make it tight in so it goes right down the side of the fly. We're going to hang it here. Now we're going to tie in our, sh our uh, chenille. It'll be the first thing we tie in. 
And there are a bunch of different size chenille. We're going to use a medium right now, and it's a round chenille. So I'm going to tie that in, tie it back a little bit. And normally I would uh, just tie that down, but I don't want it to be so big back there. I want the body to be more un still stay uniform. So I'm going to cut that off, and then I'm just going to just kind of ease that down just a little bit. I'm going to put a piece of wire in, copper wire, and uh, pull that back to where I want it. And the last thing we're going to put back here is the uh, is the feather, is the hackle. So we're going to tie it in. You can leave kind of a long end of that hackle because I'm going to wrap it all the way down the shank to give that shank a little extra size. Now your thread will stay right where it is the rest of the tie at the front um, up next to the bead. So take your uh, chenille. We're going to do touching wraps here. That means we're going to move the chenille up the shank so it's right. each wrap is right next to each other. All right. Here we go. As we do it, this always makes me feel good because I'm really cold most of the time. So to see that little bug get all snuggled up there, looks like it's got a fur coat on, makes me feel really good. Take a couple wraps over the top with your thread. Make sure you get it on the right side. Once you get it there, then I'm going to cut it off. Hold on. You always got to make sure you don't want to cut your thread. So that's a pretty uniform body. Then we're going to take the hackle. We're going to polymer it around. You can use a hackle pliers or your fingers, but if you use fingers, that usually happens at the very end of the fly when you get it up to the head. So I'm going to add my hackle pliers to it. And I can get it in there. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to palmer this hackle. That means it's an open wrap. So it's a spiral wrap, but it's not a, um, a touching wrap. So you want to start it, put back it up, and start it right on top of the chenille. And as you go, we're going to make a little spiral up the fly, up the shank of the fly. And the hackle pliers have a hole in it. So you can put your finger in it and kind of wrap it around. Um, as I get closer, I can tell that the hackle's too close. That Sorry, the pliers are too close, and so the hackles are trapped in there. I'm going to hold on to the, where it is so I don't lose it, back it off a little bit. You can see it open those hackles up. I'm going to take my thread, wrap it around, tie it in place, and sometimes the hackle pliers will actually wrap around your thread. You have to be very careful about this. So you unwrap it, get your scissors in there, make sure. I always put my points in closed and then open it up when I get there. I can snip it off like that. I'm going to add a couple wraps here just to make sure we're secure. And actually, I could fish that fly just like that. and it's, I actually like it like that. Um, we're going to add the wire because it adds a little segmentation to the body and a little more color in it. A lot of people will actually counter wrap this wire to going to lock the hackle in place, but I think it traps too many fibers. And I really like the way the it looks. So I'm going to go the same way as I did my hackle. And I can tell right away that I don't have enough wire to really feel secure about doing it. So, But it'll, it'll be enough to work. I'm just going to have to use my fingers to hold it in place as I move up the bug. Don't chintz like this. I mean, a fly tie material is not expensive. But just use more than you should, and that's what I should have done. Anyway, I think I can make it work. If I pull it around the hackle, I think I can get it under, get my uh, thread around it. All right, lock it in place. Phew, okay, that, that'll work. All right, good. I'm going to reach in there with my uh, wire scissors. You can tell because they've got black tips on them. Always mark them so you're not using your good scissors to cut your wire. Reach in there again, not to cut the thread. Clip it off and give a few more wraps on there. Now we're ready to uh, finish the fly. So I'm going to put a half hitch on. You don't have to do this. I'm going to show you how to do it with your finger. And then I'm going to show you how to do it with... Uh, electrical shrink tubing. You can actually use a 
uh, small soda straw, those little tiny straws. But the idea is, so what happens sometimes is that uh, wrapping goes around the eye of the hook. We're going to take this and we're going to make sure it goes over the top of the bead. So then when you do a half hitch on it, show you here, half hitch on it, it goes over the top of the bead, right behind it, which is where you want it. And I made it a little too tight, so I'm going to pinch it off with my fat fingers. This one's a little looser, and so it slips off a little better. Okay, one more. There we go. And we tighten it up, and we're pretty much done, other than put a little bit of head cement on it, make it look pretty for the camera. Reach in with your scissors again, give it a nice little snip. And I'm going to put a little bit of Sally's Hard as Nails on it, because who doesn't want to use fingernail polish on your fly? Reach in here. One, maybe another one on there and watch it soak into the thread it's going to make it a more durable fly and there we go we're done I present to you the woolly bugger thanks for watching